We're talking about Suhail Arabi. Suhail Arabi is in prison in Iran right now. Uh, he was arrested. Um, when, when, when was he arrested first? In 2013, right? 2013, yes. Uh, because he insulted Prophet Muhammad on Facebook. He did that anonymously. I don't know how they found that. It was him. Uh, but they found that and he's in prison. Originally, he was sentenced to death. Um, they... Um, he he's now uh, they removed that they um, now he's just uh, serving a seven year prison sentence that they uh, then they added to his prison sentence he he also has to do uh, two year mandatory Islamic studies um, but he's still in prison and he's being treated very badly um, but we talked about Sahel Arabi situation last week but since last week I mean we haven't been getting any updates about his situation. Uh, for a very long time, but then, as when we started talking about him, they, um, it was very bizarre coincidence because that's exactly last week was exactly when we got an update, and it was not a good update. Uh, he was beaten um, in prison uh, by security guards um, again, and and uh, the update to the story was that uh, he needed hospital. He needed it attention in the hospital his his situation is really bad um but they took him to the hospital but the prison had not um arranged like with the hospital before they took him there so they just showed up there with him and they said they don't have a bed for him so without getting any care by a doctor they just took him back to prison so he's his situation is getting worse and worse because he's not getting any um you know medical the medical attention he needs i think the the reason why they uh, the beating him up was a reaction to a letter that he sent out was is that the case ali i think that's what i read but um, the, yeah we it, it's really hard to say i mean the prison guards have had it out for him since he's been arrested anyways uh and they've been beating him randomly ever since so um it's really hard to say exactly what sparked it well, the thing is, uh, I have a, uh, I've been, I have a little bit of an advantage of figuring out what's going on right now because there are news about his situation in Persian. Uh, it's written in Farsi that, are, and but there's nothing about his situation being covered in English, right? And this is, you know, um, again, I'm going to compare his situation to other people that we're talking about, but I'm not trying. Whenever I do this, people might think that. I'm trying to say those other people deserve less attention. No, I'm not saying they deserve less attention. I'm trying to make a case for why this situation needs needs more attention, right? I'm not trying to take away from other cases. I'm just trying to highlight this case also, right? When we talk about a, a, a lot of cases have become very famous in the ex-Muslim community or in the fighting for people's uh, human rights in uh, Islamic countries. And these are people that Got captured a lot of people's attention that haven't that they were never on death row, right? Uh, they were never on death row. Uh, they they haven't been beaten up, even though the situations are very bad. I mean, like they, it's so bad they're getting lashing and stuff like that. But Sahel Arabi situation is so worse, and I can't find a single news article for the from for the past uh, in the past month, even though he's he's this these things have happened to him. He's been beaten up in prison. Uh, he could go back on death row for, you know, again, like he's been his people keep adding to his sentencing, as Ali explained last time. And I think the reason why his, his story is not getting any attention is because, you know, people are looking for like a Cinderella story or something like that. His 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 story is not very, you know, I don't know how to, his his name is not something that. Uh, people, could, I, I don't know. Uh, there, there are some stories that just ca captures people's appealing. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it, it, there are some stories that captures people's imagination, but his story is not getting any attention, and I think that's why we have uh, picked up his story because he's he, he needs more attention. There are some other cases that people are bringing up to me that their cases are not getting attention. I'm, we'll try to get on those as well, uh, but right now we're focusing on this one. Um, what what I just had a meeting with uh, Humanist International Bob who works there. Just I just finally had my meeting with them there, 
um, they actually pointed out that they don't even have a report on him. Like they are the number one organization that keeps reports on atheists uh, that are being discriminated against or mistreated or imprisoned, tortured, executed. And they don't even have a report on him. Right. And after my meeting with them, they said they're going to start, start working on a report on him. Right. So as soon as we get that report, I'm going to share that. Um, but but I think we picked a good case to, to highlight. OK. Uh, and it's good that and Humanist International is is, is showing uh, now it was it was hard to you know he, Bob was away for a while but now they're now they're working with us and I'm going to be in uh, London soon so we're working on meeting with them in person as well to talk about you know starting this process of highlighting cases that needs more attention at first is going to become very be very it's a learning process. But based on my experience with the other projects that we do, once we figure it out, it becomes everything starts happening faster for future cases, right? So we're now in a trial and error process, right? But the process that we are um, thinking about, we're thinking about right now, is that we pick a case, and then Ali would mention that you want to for us to get to a place where we pick. Uh, one case every two months, right? We take a blasphemer, an atheist somewhere in the world that is in trouble. We highlight, we pick the case. We talk to a humanist international to ha to 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 make sure that it's a good case to work on because they they have that those are expertise. So Atheist Republic will be focusing on highlighting cases. Um, humanist International is a good organization for us to partner up with when it comes to investigating the case. Uh, humanist International is also has a good uh, you know relationship relationship with Atheist Republic because they were the organizations that took uh, our case to the, hum uh, to the Human Rights Security Council at the United Nations when, when Malaysia went after Atheist Republic mem members in Kuala Lumpur when they were trying to hunt down our members. Oh, I'm seeing someone else joining. Zen Master, hi. Okay, uh, yeah, I see Zen Master. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm going to continue. Uh, feel free to, uh, after I'm done, I'm going to let you guys uh, add uh, your opinions as well. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to pick the case and we then we're going to pick a date. Ali right now is saying July 6th. Is that the date that you're thinking? Uh, Ali, I, I think it might have to be a little bit later because we need more time to, because this is our first case, we might need a little bit more time to plan the rallies and stuff. What do you I think? I can do that. Yeah? Okay. Yep. I just want to make sure we do it right, okay? But um, one thing, by the way, everybody here, one thing else I um, we might need help with if you guys are interested is that um, we have consulates uh, in many cities around the world, Atheist Republic consulates, and that's where atheists get to meet other atheists locally in their area. Like, for example, we have a London Atheist Republic consulate, we have a Vancouver one, we have a Manila one, and we are going to... Uh, some of them have become very, very active, right? So we are going to use our consulates to basically, when we pick a case, we pick a case we're going to pick a date, but then we're going to use our consulates to try to organize rallies and protests about, to highlight a case, right? And if uh, if any of you is interested, uh, just join our Atheist Republic consulates. You could just search for Atheist Republic consulates. You're going to find a link to every single one of them. And in, in these groups, if you want to help with setting up these rallies and protests in, in your own city, that's how that would be a huge help to us okay so we uh, uh, so we're going to pick a day pick a case uh, start start using the managers of each one of these consulates and people in there to start organizing a rally in their own city on the same date in multiple cities and again we don't want to make this too complicated so it's achievable what i tell these con what i am telling the consulate members is that Two people showing up is enough, okay? Like a lot of people are like, oh, we started something, but they, not that, that many showed up. So uh, they see some other consulates that when they have events, hundreds of people show up and they get discouraged. I said, if two people show up, that's enough for one person to hold the camera and the other person to hold a sign that says uh, free Sohail, hashtag free Sohail, Atheist Republic Vancouver or Atheist Republic Tel Aviv or Atheist Republic Ramallah or somewhere else, right? Uh, you just take it one person and then you could hand over the camera, then the other person, 
That's two people. <laughs> it, one person is enough. Just do a selfie outside in front of your Iranian embassy or somewhere or at just at home, okay? It, we'll do it the same day. If it's small, big, doesn't matter. Just do something. Thanks. We, you'll send us all the pictures and we, sh- we, we will start um, posting it on Atheist Republic. So just remember, if, even if you're just one person, when you send us that picture, we'll post it on our page, which has 2 million followers worldwide. So your one picture will make a huge difference, even if it's just one person showing up, okay? But then once we pick the date, if any of the consulates manage to make the event bigger than just one or two people, then what we're going to do be- one month before the event, if, if we see some of the consulates are really ma- managing some big event to highlight the case, for, for example, for Sohail Arabi, then we're going to try to start contacting reporters to start saying, like, look, we have a big event happening in your city about this human rights case. Can you, can you please cover it? And we're going to pre-write what they because reporters love it when you do your their, your homework for them if you write everything pre-write everything for them they're like wow this my job is done this seems like a good cause to cover i'll cover it right then we're going to start contacting reporter uh, yeah talking points thank you yes we're going to give them the talking points and then we're going to tell them to please cover this before the event starts right to t- highlight this case then when the reporters if any reporters highlights the case then we're going to go back to our consulates, the consulates that are that haven't picked up this event yet, and we're going to show them that some reporters are covering the case to encourage more of our consulates to do something about it. So it's going to be like a loop. And then if more consulates pick it up, then we're going to, in those cities, we're going to con- try to contact those reporters. We're going to have to create templates for what to tell reporters, what to tell our consulate members, uh, how to create a Facebook event inside our consulates, uh, you know, go, and then keep streamlining the process and they come bigger and bigger and bigger. One thing is very important. And one reason why we're partnering with Humanist International is to make sure that we're not highlighting a case that shouldn't be highlighted because there are some situations where you bringing more attention to something might hurt the case rather than help. Right. So we want to make sure it's not one of those cases. You know, we want to make sure we're helping. We're not just trying to do something for the sake of doing something. We want to make sure we're actually helping that this case benefits. We're getting extra attention. Right. And that's why we're, we're in touch with Humanist International. Very good organizations to be partnering up with. Uh, but anyways, I'm going to stop talking I, uh, because you guys um, haven't. I, 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 I monopolized the whole conversation. But go on. And anybody, Ali. Um, That's okay. Want to- yeah. So just to, to touch point on what Armin was saying, um, I will set, schedule a new date. I still don't want it to be too far behind. So I might extend it maybe two or three weeks if that's okay. Um, just to give us enough time to get our, our reports ready for uh, the media. So once we get all that handled, um, I think that we should just push it. And I think that even, you know, right now, if we can get people just pounding out an idea of how they're going to get together. Um, I'm currently in the process of creating, pre-creating banners for people. If they just want to take it to Kinko's mm. and have them print out a banner, done. You know, they don't have to do any work. Just just take it, print it, hold it, and click. Um I will be encouraging people to do videos of rallies that are bigger. Um, you know, I think that's going to make a big impact as well. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, it's just, it's just the power of everybody working together. I've seen, I've seen a few people say no one's going to listen to us here in, in Mumbai. You know, why, why would anyone care that we're protesting about this here? Um, and I'm you know, letting them know you're just a tiny little piece of a huge picture. So, uh, you know, having this hit at the same time all around the world, uh, this will be big. And then once we get this settled, um, this, this time around, my goal is to have us do this every two months, every two months and start bringing attention to all these people, uh, that need help. And so I think that that's, this is, this is a great start. The ultimate goal is for us to make it so that, um, at some point, like this is way down the line, like five years, ten years down the line, to f- to make Atheist Republic into an organization where, uh, when where some, if some atheist somewhere in the world is imprisoned or discriminated against or tortured or anything, people ex- would expect atheists. They know that atheists. There's going to be a huge backlash because of Atheist Republic to this. Right. We want we want to be the voice. 
We want to be the cost to going after atheists that is not there right now. We want to be the pushback to hunting down atheists that is not there right now. We want to fill in that gap that other group communities have created and we have not created. Any, uh, do you guys want to, Klaus wants to add, Zane or Zen Master? Do you guys want to add anything? Okay, Zen Master, go ahead. Unmute yourself. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can yes. hear you. Perfect. Um, I think the concept is really great. Definitely about having, you know, a centralized voice when it comes to atheists being persecuted, no matter where they are. Um, I came in right after the starting point, so I did miss a little bit of the beginning. So hopefully, we have a small little summary. Um, yes. Well, we're we're recording this, so I I don't want to repeat what we okay. said, but. We're just talking about Sohail Arabi, which is in prison for because he insulted Prophet Muhammad, and he was on death row, off death row. He's he's in prison right now. Uh, he has a seven-year sentence, uh, and he's just recently, just recently been uh, been beaten up in prison, and he's not getting medical attention. Um, uh, they needed the medical attention because of him being beaten up uh, while he's in prison, and his case is not being covered up, uh, covered by uh, any news media. All, um, the main recent sources that I could figure out is in Persian. I have to read it in Persian because no, there's not much English coverage of it, right? So that's a, that's the case we picked to to highlight. Perfect. Right. So okay. So um, did you want to add anything else before I go to? Uh, Zane and then Roy. No, I'm done. Okay, okay. Um, but but okay. Um, but by the way, th th thank you. It's good for for us to hear from you guys to tell us that you think this is the good direction that we're going because you're part of the Atheist Republic membership and we need you, you to tell us that if you think we're going in the right way. So thank you for uh, being here. Zane, did you want to add anything? Uh, yeah. So when you forward this to. I don't know what you want to call them, consulate heads or whatever they're called. Uh, one of the things that they need to do is keep it legal, right, or as much as they can. Uh, so if they have to get a permit, get a permit, right? It's not, mm. uh, I won't say it's not worth it. Uh, I'll just say we're trying to, we're not, we're not trying to uh, purposely go out there and get people arrested if it can be avoided, right? We're trying to get a message out. That's the main mission. Um, wait, and then, wait, I'm going to write these down um, to remember to add all of this whenever I'm talking to them as well. So thank you. Yeah, no worries. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, so is is your plan for every, each one of these cases that we, we take on? The, the main plan is just to um, roar really loud and uh, bring attention to them? Or do you have more than that? Uh, well, we want... So there's three steps. We want to... Uh, roar really loud as you mention it and then um, ideally that would be enough to get media coverage for it but that's not always the case then we want to actively participate in con contacting like make relationship with reporters and journalists at some point that we know that when there's reporters and there's a rally that it is going to get media coverage, right? So we will do their homework for them so it becomes an easy decision for them because first of all, we make it something worth covering because if they think if it, this is just a promotional thing, they're going to be like, yeah, no, sorry. But if it's actually something worth covering and they see that everything, their homework is done for them, it's very we, it's very encouraging for them to cover it, right? So the second step is to get media coverage. And then the, the third step eventually is to, once it gets media coverage, for us to get political, uh, for us to make uh, polit a political decision made. Like, so we want to, uh, after we start building relationship with journalists and reporters, we want to start building a, a force that will get, you know, your representative in your area to look at the media coverage that is something that is that is that that a human rights situation is taking uh, for them to say something do something right so we're going to create campaigns for people to write to their congressmen or to whatever you know people they have in in their country and we know that this makes a difference right so for example if you look at uh, canada right uh, where i am canada wasn't taking a very strong position against uh, saudi arabia right but um ever since some some recent human rights issues, I mean, this is way, way too late, but better late than never, Canada has been taking a very, very strong 
position a- against Saudi Arabia because of the media attention and people's um, recent mo- more negative views against Saudi Arabia's human rights violation, right? And that position that Canada uh, took against Saudi Arabia really set a precedent for other countries to follow, right? So first step is the rally. Second step is the media coverage. Third step is to f- try to force the hand of politicians to take a position against uh, these countries that are doing this. Ali, go on. Yeah, I wanted to add that there's also uh, another step in there that we are attempting to accomplish with media coverage and everything else too, and that is to work with our allies um, that we've you know, been making friends with, if there are certain atheists in positions where somebody like, say, Secular Rescue can help or something like that, uh, we're in touch with them and we can work with them. So, uh, you know, we will definitely try to provide any assistance we can through our allies and everything else as we go stronger, uh, perhaps more. But for right now, we're, we're going to try on every avenue to help them not just raise this as a, as a you know, a media thing so uh well which is great by the way because that's what helps get these stories into the hands of lawyers get these stories in the hands of other people who say hey you know what this is ridiculous and i can help this situation so um that that to me is also another goal of doing this okay um so the next uh, roy did you want to roy you want to add something no everything was being covered okay great uh nostalgic uh who is a Gnostic atheist? I think you're muted, but uh, Gnostic Agnostic, if you wanted to add something, let us know. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Um, the only thing I'll add is I think it's really great um, that, that this is all happening because fundamentally a person should never ever be persecuted for their lack of a belief in something. Right. Um, so I just wanted to add that point and um, say thank you for, for pursuing it. Well, thank you for saying that. All right. So just to I, I promise that I'm going to keep this uh, short. Uh, so just to just finalize this, I just want to just go through the list of things that we need to do next. And also what the next meeting is going to be about. Ali, feel free to tell me uh, if there's, I'm missing anything. So we need to finalize the date that we're going to pick for the rallies, right? We're going to, you're going to finalize the banners. Um, I'm working on drafting a letter that we're going to be um, handing out to anybody that wants to see what this is about. Um, and then I, what I could do, I, I'm drafting it on Google Docs. What I could do is then share it with our members. I could email it and people could give us feedback on how we could improve the letter uh, once I send it to our members. Um, and one other thing we need to have prepared for before next week is a template Facebook event and uh, what the Facebook event template is going to look like so that then the, all these consulates know what kind of event they could make create within their own concerts. We'll make a public version of it as well, right? For people that want to just do something. I will have that done and ready to present by our next meeting next week. Okay. And the next meeting will be about announcing the rally and the letter and make the, that would be the video that we could also send to um, reporters or whoever else that wants to just yeah. instead of reading something just watch what this is about okay yeah. okay okay cool all right uh, if um, that, that that was it is does anybody want to add anything we're trying to keep these meetings short so more people are encouraged to short uh, to to attend so uh, because if it's long then oh uh, I see a comment once the rally start happening and you do okay let me see I went disappeared let me try to see what um, you don't have to read it. That's why yeah. I put it. You can read it later. So. No, no. I went because we're recording it. I want this to go on the show. Like, you tell me. Okay, you read it. <laughs> okay, fine. So, the the only thing I was going to add is uh, in regards to all your steps, right? Mm. Um, you, you also mentioned in I don't know first meeting that each case has nuance. So in this particular case, right? Mm. Uh, you know, we're not a multi-million dollar or billion dollar nonprofit or right. corporation, so we don't have the type of money to I don't know, hire people to break people out of jail. So we had to do it the legal route, and the legal route means trying to get these people lawyers. Um, So for example, Edward Snowden had that one, I don't remember her name, but she was a famous international lawyer that uh, typically defends whistleblowers, right? Right. Uh, So as that, that as an example, so if you can find organizations that have lawyers like this, like we have the ACLU in the United States, I'm sure there's international organizations. Um, Once you get, 
you know, uh, coverage for his case, right? Uh, that would that would be a proper step for this particular case, I think. The problem, the diff, the problem is that you're ta- we're dealing with Iran's legal system, okay? So these lawyers, these big lawyers that you're talking about, they t- they they have they can do a lot because they're dealing with Western countries' legal systems, right? But when it comes to Iran's legal system, these people do not have any, like, what are they going to do? To challenge blasphemy laws? Well, that's the law that they have to deal with, right? If, uh, it's not, um, if it's not international lawyers, that's fine. It can be, our, you know, Iranian-specific lawyers. But the, the point is, is for what, this, this specific case, right? Right. This guy needs lawyers. Cause, like, he does you, have a lawyer. He does have a lawyer. And the problem is that the law, uh, one thing, being a lawyer, in, first of all, you have to be an Iranian lawyer to be able to present his case right <laughs> and the another problem is that we probably can't work with his lawyer because a lot of lawyers in iran end up needing their own lawyers at some point because they get arrested some of them have been getting executed because they were defending people problematic people right um and if this lawyer ends up working with atheists right or is recommended by atheists i i don't think that's a that's the kind of attention that the lawyer wants right um, so well, I don't think. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. It just goes back to the international point. Right. Um, so it, I understand there most international lawyers might know Western law, but yeah. if you um, if you are able to find one that knows Iranian law or a couple, right, and have international notoriety, meaning they have they know people in places, mm-hmm. right, so they can't just be, you know, they go to Iran and get arrested right away, right, um, because they have they know whoever, right. If you can find people like that, that will help this guy oh, out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, or if a sure. politician goes to Iran, tries to get somebody out. Yeah, they, I'm not they, saying that this is feasible. I don't even know if this is even possible. No, no. I'm just saying for this specific case, it makes sense to go that route eventually. Right, right. Yeah. No, no, it's good. It's good because th- this is something that I didn't even think about. But no, it might. I mean, I don't want. Uh, I want to make sure that we. It, nobody thinks like, uh, well, would this work or not? Maybe I shouldn't even say it. No, because we have no idea what works. So I want everybody to be able to just say everything, and then we'll decide later whether it w- works or not, right? Uh, so it, it's fine. Yeah, but but no, this is interesting because I know it w- there was another case. Uh, there was a woman who was arrested in Iran, and th- they were trying to get British politicians to actually go to Iran to get her out, and this has been done many times. So, for example, even with uh, North Korea, you had uh clinton go there you know bill clinton go there to j- try to get some people out j- even though they, their laws does not recognize international laws when they send a politician to get it, it does work or somebody with like famous or something like that right right you want to add something yeah something about those uh, examples that you brought it's people with do with two citizenship like the British yes. woman, I, I, we know this in Israel, we heard about the news, that this is because she was a British citizen. Yes. So yeah. it, it's a difficult because Iran work in another planet, like another <laughs> right. like legal planet. Yes, exactly. Unfortunately. But- Yes, but but even though it's interesting because the people, like there are, there are some people with dual citizenship right now in Iran that are in prison, and even we... The international community hasn't even gotten, hasn't been able to get them out. Okay. And those people with the dual citizenship, they have a much better case than somebody like Sohel Arabi. Because, and they're still in prison. So you can see how hopeless Sohel Arabi's situation is right now, which is, ah, fuck. Anyways, on, on that depressing note, um happy mother's day again to everybody and um i know this video is so sorry about bumming everybody out but i'm gonna keep um yeah anyways see you guys this is our job this is our, yes this is our job anyways thank you guys for being here thank you guys for supporting us um hopefully one day we'll become much bigger with a lot more re- resources and we will we would be able to do all these things a lot more efficiently but for now you guys are the founding members so really appreciate your support atheists are under attack in many places if they were christians their voices would be heard if they were jews their voices would be heard if they were muslims their voices would be heard But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, 
cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we're doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.